Wood Christian Fellowship's weekly podcast. Hope you really enjoyed today's sermon and I hope it really blesses you. So as you might have guessed, our theme today is hope, as you have just seen in that little play. Um, Bethany has written this little sermon that I have the privilege to speak. So. so our theme today is hope. The dictionary defines hope at the belief that things will work out for the best, for a person or thing in which expectations are centred. Hope is to put your trust and faith in something, and today I encourage you to put your hope in the promises of God as the centre of your expectations. One of the many historical events in the Bible that illustrates hope and faith in God is the story of Noah. Noah trusted God totally. Noah trusted totally in God through all the ridicule and hard work he experienced while doing God's will. The world had become full of violence and cruelty, so God brought a massive flood that covered and destroyed everything on earth. But God told Noah to build an ark, which was to save his family, two of every animal in existence, and anybody else who trusted in God. The door to the safety boat was open to everyone on earth if they chose to accept it. The ark, a huge wooden box of about 133 metres by 22 metres by 13 metres, took Noah and his three sons 100 years to build. While the rest of the world thought he was crazy, he trusted in God and never gave up, even though it took a century to build. Noah had hope in God right from the beginning, and he never let go of this hope. Noah had been given exact instructions from God of how to build the ark to preserve the future of every living thing on earth. Noah's hope in God's promise to save him from the floods helped him carry out this huge project for all those years, with the immense amount of ridicule he got from the rest of the world. Noah continued to hope in God's promises. In Genesis 6, verses 17 and 18, God says to Noah, I'm going to send a flood that will destroy everything that breathes. Nothing will be left alive. But I solemnly promise that you, your wife, your sons and your daughters-in-law will be kept safe in the boat. After Noah had followed God's instructions for a hundred years building the ark, at last God brought the flood. All of Noah's efforts were not in vain. He had hoped in God because of God's call and promise to save him. Noah and his family then had to endure another 375 days inside the boat with no dry land, fresh air or sunshine in order to be saved from the flood. All along this trial, Noah and his family hoped in God, and eventually the flood ended. They had been saved. God has promised there will never be another flood that will destroy all life on earth like this. The reality is, though, that we are all going to die one day, and without a way to be saved, we would be headed for destruction. Just like Noah and the rest of the world in his time, we have the choice of whether or not to get on board the ark available and be saved from eternal death. We do have a saviour, Jesus. Stronger than any wooden box, this ark is here to save us from eternal destruction and give us eternal life. For God so loved the world, he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. God opened the door to the ark when he sent his perfect son to die as payment for your sin and for my sin so that we could be made right with God and enter into everlasting life one day. Everybody has the choice to get on board and be saved. We have to hope in God that he will fulfill his marvellous promise to save us and give us eternal life in heaven. We have to choose to go on this journey, to try our best to live for God and to get others to come onto the ark and be saved. Noah was, was thought to be crazy for building this huge ark because all the rest of the world did not believe in God's intention to send a huge flood. The door was open to them for a long time, but they did not understand that they needed saving, so no other people but Noah's family were saved. We never know when our lives will end, but God has given Jesus to us as a safety boat. We need to have faith and hope in his promises now so that we will be saved when our time on earth ends. It took 100 years for Noah to finally see the results of his hard work 
and hope in God. Until the flood actually began, Noah had been driven solely by hope. Yes, he had been told what would happen, but he cho- had chosen to believe it and follow God until finally God's promise took place. We are the same. The Bible tells us why we need to be saved, what from, where we can choose to go, how we can get there, and who will take us. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The only way we can be saved is through Jesus. When the end time comes, no high ground or mountaintop will save us. The only thing about being saved that we will never know is when our lives on earth will end. This is why we choose God's promise of eternal salvation today and never let go of this hope. Jesus is our ark today. This hope will not let us down. When the end comes, we will finally see that our hope was worthwhile. However, it is not all an easy journey. Noah spent 100 hard years building the ark for God, and after that, spent an incredibly long time in a boat, far above the ground, not knowing when it would be over. Noah's diligence to do God's will took effort. He had to give up his time when he could have been doing other things in order to obey God. There is certainly a cost when we choose to put our hope in God. We have to continually fight against temptation to do things that displease God. As well as this hard work, we have to endure people thinking we are crazy. Most of the world does not believe in the need to be saved from eternal destruction and will ridicule us for having this hope in the one and only Saviour. But it is our responsibility to show others the door to the ark, the way to Jesus, so that they can decide to believe in God's awesome promise and be saved from their sin. This responsibility is not always easy either, but everyone needs to be saved, so we have to show the way and the reason for our hope to the rest of the world. Choose to let God become the centre of your expectations. Put your hope in him. He will work everything out for the best, even if your life feels like it's going through a flood. Hebrews 6 verses 18 says, God cannot tell lies. And so his promises and vows are two things that can be never changed. We have to run to God for safety. Now his promises should greatly encourage us to take hold of the hope that is right in front of us. Hey, thanks for listening to the podcast of Inglewood Christian Fellowship in Taranaki, New Zealand. Call by and listen in again next week. God bless. Bye-bye.